RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Hi everyone, welcome to Studio RPV. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And I'm Maria Soreo. Liz, our first show together in 2019. It is, and the new year is off to a great start. It really is. You know, it's, uh, it's a new year, new resolutions, new things to look forward to. Did you make a resolution? So my resolution this year is really just to live in the moment more because I'm such a planner and I know I drive people crazy and myself included. So just kind of living in the moment more. I like that. Just be in the day that yes, you have right here before exactly. us. And it's a great day always being with you. you as my, well. I set an intention. I like to say an intention and that is just to be That's overall healthier. Um, and to stop gaining and losing back that same 10 pounds every year. So this so year I'm going to be disciplined and focused more. But you have a great, great motivation to do that, which we're going to talk about later in the show. So I'm sure you'll be able to do it. And this show really is, we're focusing, we have some great stories to help all of us become healthier. Yes. And um, also we're going to talk about having a prosperous new year. We're going to start with that. I like that. Because we had here on the peninsula, a well-known U.S. economist came to talk about why he thinks 2019 will be prosperous. He was at Terranea Resort. Christopher Thornburg. Yes, Christopher Thornburg yep. met with the Palace Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. So, sellout crowd as always. He comes year after year um, to talk about what he sees going to happen. Sees happening in the economy. And he said it's more. It's more positive. People are working more. The economy is better. So that's a great way to start the new he year. He did. He said despite sort of the doom and gloom that we're hearing about in the news often, we hear about the you know the trade war with China and the volatile stock market. In right. general, he's saying, you know, things are looking up and he, he points to all the signs like rising wages and low unemployment. So let's join Christopher Thornburg at Terranea Resort. There's, there's two kinds of stories. Um, there's a story about the real economy, which candidly hasn't changed much since last year. Things are fine. There's lots of good momentum. Nothing's out of whack. And then, of course, you have what I would call the um, the psychology story, the politics, the press, and all that's been crazy. I mean, you think about the, the, the election, the stock market sell off, now we have the government shutdown, screaming headlines in every direction. Um, the message here today is that stuff is noise. You got to take a step back from the rhetoric, look at the reality of the economy. Stock market I get is really scary to people, but we've been through this before. This is the sixth major sell-off. People need to start realizing that this stock market sell-off says everything about the stock market and not think about the real economy. I mean, look at the trends in the United States. Unemployment is lower than the job openings rate. If every person looking for a job in the U.S. economy took one of those job openings, we'd have job openings left over. Here in California, we, we have one of the fastest growing out economies on the basis of output, one of the strongest labor markets. Here in LA County, the unemployment rate's at a record low level. Things are good. Well, businesses are still going strong, but there's a lot you know, happening. There's been a lot of market correction. The China trade issues are a big issue because a lot of companies in the United States import from China. And uh, there's a little uncertainty right now. Probably the fear is the biggest risk that we have right now. It's really interesting because we're at the location that's really the, one of the key drivers of our economy, and that's beautiful Terranea. And uh, ever since they opened their doors, they've blown through their forecasts every single year. It's like 20% of our budget every single year of, our, of the revenue that comes in, and this year will be no different. First of all, a beautiful morning full of business leaders who really care about our economic growth here on the peninsula. We're very excited. We have nearly 1,400 associates, so we're paying paychecks for 1,400 people every two weeks, and it's really important. And they're taking care of their families, they're here for a very long time, and we're very happy, and we're happy to give back to the community, and we'll continue to do so as we move to the next 10 years. That chamber breakfast, Marie, is so popular. It's always so a sellout, and it's also where the chamber has their changing of the guard. They that's they have right. their board, um, a new board gets sworn in, and our city councilwoman, Susan Brooks, swore in the new board. And guess who's back on the board this We're year? We're excited. President of Terranea, Terry That's Hack. Right. They were so happy to have Terry back on the Terry board. Terry is so busy all the time. I don't know how she does all of this. She's Between her and Eileen Hupp, they're just busy all the time. Yes, no, she she was um, amazing, and they have her back on. And this year is Terranea, by the way, celebrating exciting. 10 years. Can you believe it's been 10 years, Liz? Yeah, we were there when they opened, and so we'll be there all this year, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to have all 
some kind of special events. Yeah, celebrating Terranea. And one reason years. we celebrate how what a big powerhouse they are to fuel our local economy. That's right. I think since they've opened the doors, I mean, they've given tens of millions of dollars in their transient occupancy tax right. to our city of RPD. So we're super appreciative. Keep it coming. And we've <laughs> had a lot of fun there in 10 years, Liz. Yes, we have. A lot yes, of fun. We have. Yes. Well, as I said, they had the changing of the guard with mm -hmm. the uh, board of directors over at the chamber, but there's right. been a changing of the guard happening at the Lameda Sheriff Station. Right. He said so long to Captain Dan Berenger. He has retired. He, what a great guy. He, such a nice guy, but he's looking forward to being retired, I think, too. He was so ready. And, yeah. you know, he was with the Sheriff's Department for more than 30 years. That's and a long time. worked two different times at Lameda Sheriff's, last as captain. And so he was honored um, the, by RPV City Council and the Mayor, Jerry DeHovic. That was so nice. They had a wonderful celebration at the uh, January 15th Council meeting. We were there for that. And, of course, had cake and all that fun stuff. Cake is always good. And just talked about all he accomplished, because while he was on in charge, um, crime significantly dropped in RPV. That's right. And um, now, again, who's going to be the new? Who's the new sheriff in town, Liz? Well, we're going to stay tuned for that. There's, they're going to be looking for his replacement right now. Uh, Lieutenant Mike White is acting as captain. But right. I caught and I caught up with um, Lieutenant White and Captain Berenger. So let's hear what they let's have to say. Let's take a look. Um, I'm just proud of uh, the relationships I built here, well, not only with the Sheriff's Department staff, but with the city staff. The mayor read a long list of accomplishments that have happened under your watch, but the biggest exciting thing is that we've seen crime go down. What do you account for for that? The, the council supporting the uh, public safety plan, strategic plan, and involvement from the community. We can't do anything without the community's involvement, and everyone in RPV is just so, so good about reporting things and staying in touch with Neighborhood Watch and looking out for their neighbors. I've worked for a lot of at a lot of different assignments and for a lot of different captains and Dan Berenger is one of the finest captains I've ever worked for. Hardworking, engaging, very knowledgeable about uh, the peninsula and Lamita, the city of Lamita and the surrounding cities and very involved and a cheerleader and engaging and we're gonna, he's going to be sorely missed. I know you're right now you're stepping in acting in his position how's that going for you and what are you excited about in terms of just helping with public safety here on the peninsula you know what hopefully the the citizens won't see any change we're, we're still doing the same things we always do uh, trying to combat crime uh, residential burglaries and keep the community safe and just reduce crime overall anything to do with your retirement what are you thinking about uh, we're gonna travel and my wife has a long list of things that need to be done around the house so I'll be busy Again, big congratulations to Captain Berenger and a big thank you for all of his years of service. All of his hard work and helping us out all the time. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Now, there is a new, free, exciting lecture in town. Leanne Lorraine, our good friend, had a lecture at the library. Is that right? right. Tell us more about so it. Liz, Leanne there. Lorraine used to run the lecture series with Peninsula Seniors, and now she has started a new monthly lecture series. With the Friends it's called of the library. Leanne and Friends, yep. right? Because the Friends of the Library and her will put this on. It's going to be the second Friday of every month at 10 a.m. in the community room, and it will get packed in there when you go. So packed because she gets amazing, amazing guests, including a, her first guest. Tell us about yeah, him. Yes, so the first guest she had in January, I went to the lecture. His name is Greg Schreiner from LA, and he started the Marilyn Monroe Remembered Fan Club. He's about everything Marilyn. He's fascinating with his stories, brought one, you know a replica uh, of one of her dresses, dresses, but he owns many of them. And you just, just take one home, did you? Oh, no, no, no. But you know what? It was such an amazing lecture. And, um, and we're going to share some of that right now, so let's check it out. Let's take a look. Well, I'm going to share a little about Marilyn herself, but mostly it's going to be about me. I grew up in a very small town in the Midwest, so I really had no connection to Hollywood. But since then, I have now become probably the world's most preeminent, uh, preeminent uh, collector of Marilyn Monroe items. And it's taken me all over the world. I've done exhibits in all the major countries of the world with my collection. And it's opened a lot of doors for me. I've met so many people that knew Marilyn, and it, I'm president of her fan club. So it's really been an amazing journey. So Leanne and Friends is a monthly lecture series, the second Friday of every month. And we're going to be bringing some, you know, interesting people. Uh, today was Greg Schreiner to basically launch the series. Next month will be David Benoit. And uh, I'm filling in the schedule. But later in this year, I'm very excited. I just secured a woman who wrote a book about showgirls. And we have an aerospace 
lecture lined up. We have an Egyptologist coming in May. So uh, we're putting it all together and we're trying to provide the community with a monthly lecture that is unique and special with high quality speakers. Uh, it's really sort of a gift to the community and to the friends of the library. I'm so excited to have Leanne doing this new series for us. Um, the friends promote all of the programming for the library. But this is a new uh, lecture series, and uh, we think it's really going to be very, very exciting for the community. I just loved it, and I thought that Greg did such a great job presenting the story of Marilyn Monroe, whom we all dearly loved. A tragic life, a beautiful girl, and we just, it was just like going back in time and looking at her costumes that she wore. The woman was just so special and we were so lucky to have her in our lives, in our time, and to be able to touch that again. It just gave me a wonderful feeling today to be here and to feel that she once belonged to us, almost felt like she was alive again, and we wish she was, don't we? That was such a good story. Yeah, and what a presentation on Marilyn. So many Amazing. fun facts about her. And you can watch the entire lecture, Maria, right here on RPV right. TV. Leanne's uh, lecture series airs, and it's on daily at 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. on Channel 33. That's right. And remember to get there early next time. David Benoit is going to be there, and it will sell out, even though it's free. Of course, Space will sell he's out. He's one of the sure. you know, most famous musicians, musicians, jazz pianists. So uh, get there February yeah, 8th awesome. at 10 a.m. It's going to be fantastic. All right, Liz, what's coming up now? Well, we're going to take a short break, Maria, and we're yep. going to come back, and we'll be joined right here in studio by a popular physical therapist who is helping hundreds of people deal with a difficult problem of urinary incontinence. RPV resident Catherine Kasai will be here to dispel the myths and explain why no one needs to suffer. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Studio RPV. And joining us here in studio, we're, it's so great to have an RPV resident, Catherine Kasai. Right. Hello, Hello, ladies. Hello, thanks How are you for doing? being here. You are the owner of Praxis Physical Therapy yes. in San Pedro. And we asked you to come here to talk about something that so many people don't want to talk about, and that is urinary right. incontinence. That's right. And you help people, you help cure people that have this issue, and it's a big issue. So yes. thanks for coming in to talk about this. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah. Tell us who usually has urinary incontinence and why. Well, urinary incontinence is super common, but never normal. Uh, sadly, half to a third of all women leak urine, and lots of men too. I mean, it's a silent epidemic. Wow. Um, there are a couple of different kinds of incontinence, and each kind comes with different causes. So stress urinary incontinence occurs when someone laughs or sneezes or coughs or runs, and um, uh, for that, they um, the cause of that is urine is pelvic floor weakness. These are the muscles of the pelvic floor. Wow. And uh, what causes them to become weak? Because otherwise these muscles should be strong enough to not prevent to prevent leakage during those activities of coughing, sneezing, etc. And what does and cause them to, to become to weak? To weak. Yeah. Well, um, having a baby. Mm. The stretch trauma of that makes the muscles weak. Um, menopause with the changes in the hormone levels can make the muscles weak. Uh, men who have their prostates removed due to cancer, they usually have a pretty significant leakage problem wow. after you're, that occurs. You're saying, I mean, it can affect women mostly, like you're saying, after they have childbirth or at, at any age, right. um, and men. And so, when it's, so, since so many people have it, why do you say, you always say it's not normal to leak? Right. But people feel like it is. It's just part of aging. Is that, that's a myth. Right, that's absolutely a myth. And, um, you know, it's not a shame to have it, but women and men, you know, especially the women, um, they don't like to bring it up, even to their own doctors, mm -hmm. uh, because they're not sure 
what can be done. They don't want to do surgery. They don't want to do medications. And yet they're totally unaware that there's physical therapy for this, which is non-invasive. And, and tell us use. about that. Yeah, physical, us, yes. therapy. physical therapy. Yes. Well, um, so there's a second kind of incontinence. So the, the approach varies depending on which type. Okay. So for uh, stressed urinary incontinence, I always use something called surface EMG biofeedback. It's um, very much... That? That's a big word. <laughs> yes. So to, to, you know, titrate it down, it's very similar to an EKG. Okay. And with this in place, the um, person can actually see their muscles working on the computer screen. And um, so then we do exercises to improve the strength, the endurance, also very important, um, coordination, and also um, to build function. Okay. And then later in my program, we add uh, the Pilates Reformer, which adds more core strength. And this is all done over the course of 12 weeks, usually yes. for the yes. typical person that's, that's dealing a, a with typical, this. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Now, there's a second type of incontinence we haven't mentioned yet, and it can be even more devastating to the life of the man or woman, and that's called urge incontinence. So this occurs when people get a sudden, large urge to urinate that comes on so hard that they don't make it to the bathroom in time. And um, they often go to the bathroom way too often, day and night. Wow. Um, even to the point where they say, they tell me, you know, my bladder is controlling my life. Right. I mean, imagine needing to leave your house to just do some errands. And before you leave, you have to plot out or map out where every bathroom is before you leave. I remember uh, my they grandmother hate stopped going yes. to the parade because she was af you know, afraid she wouldn't make it to the bathroom, which is yeah. why you wrote the book, The Bathroom Key. That's yeah. right. Tell us yeah. a little about that book for a minute. Then. Yes. <laughs> so uh, it's called The Bathroom Key, Put an End to Incontinence. And I wrote this with a cured patient of mine, Kim Pirelli. Who is a young woman. Yes. 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 She's a young mother. And um, not your typical poster child for incontinence, right? right. Not a nursing home patient, you know, no. in her walker, not at all. And um, one of the first things she said to me when she walked into the clinic at Praxis was, I had no idea there was physical therapy for this. That's if it. I had known, I would have been here years and, before. And it's covered by insurance. So Absolutely. If people are having great. issues with leaking, yeah. they need to talk to their doctors, ask about that. Maybe they won't need right. to be on medications. Maybe they can get rid of the pads. Right. We only have like a minute here. So for someone watching right now, yes. has a New Year's resolution to kick leaking. Yes. Let's say they that. need to get in they touch with you. you. What would you yes. tell them? How, yes. You know? I would tell them, don't endure it. Cure it. There we go. Um, the New Year's resolution can be 2019 is the year I became pad free. Right. That's you know, it. speak up to your doctor, get referred to a pelvic PT. Um, I'm in San Pedro, Praxis Physical Therapy, or they can just start. My home program is in here. This book is curative. Oh, yeah. It's not just like how you deal with something. Read Amazon reviews and, and, uh, the, and it's cured. What's the website? Yeah, your website. Um, so for the book, it's thebathroomkey.com. For the clinic, it's praxisphysicaltherapy.com. And you've been doing this Very for good. decades, and you've helped yes. a lot of people. 23 years. And thanks for sharing. Excellent. We need to yes. do another whole program with you because well, there's a lot of information. Here. Absolutely. Because it, it does affect so many people. <laughs> totally. It and does. you don't want it to control people's lives. No. Absolutely. There's help no. out there for sure. And you're yeah. good, and thank you for all you're doing. And yes. thanks for spending time and coming in. And, and, and so we're going to. pleasure is all mine. All right. all right. And when we come back, we're going on a little health kick. You're going to meet a Golden Co. Pilates instructor. You're also going to meet a college student who lost almost 100 pounds. And Councilwoman Susan Brooks is going to share a favorite recipe. So stay tuned. Families come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice. Or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. We are back and our next story will inspire you. Liz, your son Alex has lost almost 100 pounds. I had a chance to sit down with him and he is just amazing. What an amazing young man. Thank you. I was so oh. appreciative that you asked if you could sit down when Alex was yes. home for Christmas break. And, um, you know, for the last month, actually, and it just was to watch what he did. He worked so hard. He was ready to do it. He was committed. He was ready. And over about a year's time, he, he was sharing with me and just committed to it, stuck with it. And the results are amazing. Here is more from Alex Swanson. Alex Swanson, you lost almost 90 pounds now. Former resident here, you're going to college. Tell me, first of all, what got in your head, the mindset to lose that weight? So, I mean, I'd always struggled with weight loss for a pretty good chunk of my life, or with having weight on me. And one day I was just 
waking up and going to work out and I was like, I want to do something more, try my diet, see if that changes anything with weight loss. And I called my mom, we had done Weight Watchers a couple times before. So like, let's do Weight Watchers again. So we went in and I was listening to where the new program works and it really started to click with me. And that mindset change at first is what kind of catapulted me into this. You know what, you have to have so much motivation to do it. What do you think clicked into your head that said, I'm good this time, I'm, g I'm gonna do it? It's actually funny, because my mom was telling me just recently that I was telling her, I don't know if I'll be able to do it because I'm in school, it's a lot to balance, which is a fair point, but I think we always make an excuse for ourselves, and that's something I've just come to realize like in the last couple of months, that we always have an excuse, and that's really motivated me now. But back then it was just, um, I want to be healthier. I want to be able to live life a little bit easier and not have, you know, such bad back pain or something, you know? You know, we talked about this kind of being like a lifestyle change. How much significant weight did you lose and said, oh my God, this is amazing? So it came off pretty easily in the first couple months. Like by that second month in, I was down 20-ish pounds. And by six, seven months in, I was at 50 pounds. So, I mean, once it started falling off, it made sense to me. And it, the good thing was I wasn't really making drastic life changes at first, but now I can see how big of life changes I was making then. So I think that's the easiest thing, just making sure whatever you're doing is going to be easy for you to follow through with. I think the thing that's really good about Weight Watchers too is that you can go out and eat in restaurants and you can eat regular food. Is there one thing that you gave up that you miss? I didn't really give up anything per se, but sweets I definitely cut back on, which is kind of hard. Everybody loves a piece of cake here and then. But the amount of sweets I was eating before, like if I even tried to eat now, I would feel sick to my stomach. So in the end, it was better. Yeah, like a bite of chocolate's okay. Exactly, yeah. Or a whole chocolate bar. Why not? <laughs> you have to splurge every once in a while. That's true. You'll just go crazy if you don't. Exactly. Now, tell me about um, your working out routine now. So I didn't really work out that much before, but this last couple of months, as I had less weight to lose, I definitely had to ramp up how much time I was in the gym. But, I mean, just even walking outside, like anything that's different than what you normally do is going to be better, so you might as well just try it. How much better do you feel? So much better. I feel way more confident, and... I noticed once I hit 50 pounds, like I actually was genuinely smiling. And like that seems crazy to say, but like I looked in pictures and I was like, that is an actual smile. Like I was happy to see myself in that photo. You know, there's so many people have weight issues. I am so very proud of Alex. I'm sure you are as well for sticking to the program and he looks amazing. Yeah, I mean, he could be the Weight Watcher spokesperson. He not could. Just keep that program. He got yes. me to sign back up. And I think what I love about the program is, is you can really eat anything. It's all about making the right choices. It and is. what they've really incorporated in their program now is about mindset. It's not yeah. just about diet and exercise. It's also you have to be there. And that's what you got out of that interview with well, him. Well, you have to be ready. ready. Yeah, you have to be ready to do it. And then you can commit. And you can still eat a piece of candy or a piece of cake Whatever you want, you just can't eat 20 of them. Yeah, and I also appreciate you, you got to talk to him at the Interpretive Center. Yeah, where he, he was used a docent. To, he used to be a docent there right. back in high school. Back and in so the it was day. really great memories there for him, so thank it you. It was fun. No, it was really yeah. great. And that should just inspire everybody to stick to a diet, and you'll look amazing too. Yes. Yes, and speaking of sticking to things, everybody has New Year's resolutions to lose weight, of course, and one of our local Pilates instructor, Ophi Dates, she has a studio right here in Golden Cove, and amazing, amazing program program that she has, but she really talks about what it takes, because they say as of February 1st, so many people drop off of their resolution, so here's Ophi talking about sticking to the program. Let's take a look. I think probably after the first month of the year is because people really don't set any realistic goals, and so we always try to encourage that you set some goals that are going to be achievable and attainable and realistic, and I always like to start with like setting short-term goals and uh, define the goal and then go for it. We're really very fortunate here because our clients are so stable and, and very consistent with their workouts. So they come in, you know, two to three times a week because we exclusively do private training here. But then we do get the other client, maybe who hasn't been here for a year, and says, okay, Ophie, I'm ready to get back. I want to do five days a week. And we go, okay, let's take a step back. We do an intro session, and then we kind of discuss what their goals are. Um, you know, we specialize in Pilates, but we also do strength training, and we do some classes, yoga. And uh, I'm a firm believer of cross-training, so then we find what's best for them, and then we suggest what they should be doing. Health and nutrition is absolutely important. So we uh, do encourage that they really 
strive to have a healthy lifestyle. Um, so we say, you know, healthy diet. And I always encourage even people, just take one thing out of your diet that you know isn't good. And we'll start with that and then start to go from there. Second thing that we encourage all the time, really important, is water. Water, 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 because water will help in increasing their metabolism, increasing their circulation, and it's just a, a great thing for the body on a cellular level as well as just them be feeling better overall. We also um, encourage them once they start their program that they're accountable to themselves. So it's great for them to chart their workouts. If they have that nice positive attitude, then definitely they're going to see results, you know, and they'll feel better about themselves. And that, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. They have to feel good about themselves. You know, Liz, I don't think that staying in shape is really that difficult once you think about it and realize that it's just a lifestyle. Right. And it's being consistent. I mean, working out like we were just watching with Ophi, it's yep. just, you know, setting reasonable expectations, doing even a little bit every day. You've always been, you're like a fitness princess. You I really have take my care moment. of yourself, yes, but you've been, I it's mean, a lifestyle. Yeah, and you, but you've got to also be willing to put the time in. That's right. The right? time, we, the time really is minimal once you get to that mindset that, like Alex was talking about too, just that you're ready to do it and stick with it. Yeah, how and about, part of it is eating. Yes. How about getting ready to eat more vegetables? Let's yes. make that our resolution: eating more veggies. Now, I love veggies, yes. and I love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I don't know why people don't like them. I think because they've never tried them. Yeah, I think though they've made a comeback. I mean, they've I kind they of been are. like the in thing it's, on the yeah, menu. Yeah, it's like the cool thing now at a restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, you can order Brussels those sprouts. Those little, those little cabbage. I do like. Brussels I love sprouts. them, but I have friends that I go out. They're like, I don't want to order that, and I'm like, come on, just try it. Get to know so how to delicious. make them. And our own councilwoman Susan Brooks made some for us. They were amazing. Um, we could say even smashing. They were smashing Brussels sprouts. Let's take a look. For those of you who like Brussels sprouts, we have a fun Brussels sprout recipe for the whole family. This is called smashed Brussels sprouts. It is so much fun that my five-year-old grandson loves to smash Brussels sprouts every time I make this dish. So the first thing we start with, a pound of Brussels sprouts here, and we have about five ounces of cheese, and then we're gonna use salt, pepper, olive oil. That's pretty much it. It's how you cook this that really matters. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna, I've gotten this to a rolling boil. Parboil these for about 10 or 15 minutes first. And you want them to still be hard, but you don't want them to be uh, mushy. And I can tell by poking them that they're just about, I pulled one out here, and it's at that point where it can be smashed. I'm gonna just strain it through this pot. So what I do is I take some olive oil, spread it around on here, probably about two tablespoons of olive oil. Take the Brussels sprouts, Pour them out. And then we have about two tablespoons here of diced garlic. Now, the reason that we're going to do the garlic on these, I'm going to kind of push them together here, try to smash them all together when we smash them. The reason that we put the garlic on is so that when you smash them, the garlic gets smashed into the, into the Brussels sprouts. So it really helps with the flavor. So now I'm going to start smashing just like this. And I'm going to take this cheese and I'm just going to put this sprinkle of cheese on top. I'm also going to add some salt and some pepper. So I'm going to put some more cheese on right now on top here. And I have to say I really do think that the sharp cheddar cheese really works the best. We also have here some Parmesan cheese and this cheese will help diversify the taste. Okay, so we sort of made it into a nice little pie. Then I'm gonna put it in a 400 degree convection oven right now. It's gonna sit in here. And I'm gonna put it on here for 10 minutes. And so here we have our wonderful, yummy, smashed Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to take a couple of Brussels sprouts here, put them in this dish. See these nice ends? It's nice when you can get it a little brown like this. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Solid American food. Bon appetit. 
You know, Liz, every time I see that story, I'm hungry for Brussels sprouts. I think I'll make some when I get home today. We're going to go shopping right after this and yeah. pick up some Brussels sprouts. I already sprouts. have some. Yeah, one pound in the recipe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Studio RPV. Thanks for watching. I'm Maria Soreo. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.